So now let's focus on crime. Um, how do you plan to address crime, particularly in Baltimore, which has become, unfortunately, a national a national symbol of of crime in the country? And and and, and this issue is personal. Uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a very proud Baltimorean, uh, and I'm someone who has seen the impacts of this from a uh, up close and personal. Uh, you know, I, I think about just very recently where I had to come off the campaign trail uh, and I went to go speak at the vigil of a 69 year old grandmother who was a member of my church in East Baltimore, who was working as a custodian in that church. And she was killed in the church bathroom. And I got off the trail to go speak at her vigil. So this issue is real. It is uh, it's personal. And part of the biggest challenge we have of it, it's not even a piercing pain anymore for many people in Baltimore and around the state. It's more of a chronic pain. Like people are so used to it. And there's a problem with the fact that we've now gone on eight straight years of 300 plus homicides without a response, a concentrated statewide response which is what our administration is going to bring. And that will include things like being able to have intelligence sharing between the local jurisdictions and the state and, and state police and state authorities, where we have information and we have data that's coming in about how the crimes are happening, when they are happening. But if you don't have data sharing mechanisms in place, you are never gonna be able to translate, translate that into safer streets. It means we have to fix our, a broken parole and probation system, where a third of all violent crimes that are taking place right now are being done by people who are in violation of parole and probation. So, i.e., we know who they are. We know who the trigger pullers are. And they continue to get back into our neighborhoods and our communities and wreak havoc. We've got to fix a broken parole and probation system where right now in the state of Maryland, we have over 150 vacancies in parole and probation. If people are not in the seats, they can't do the job. It means we've got to invest in our violence interruption programs that are on the streets doing the work. You know, myself and my running mate, uh, Delegate Aruna Miller, we believe deeply in the idea that people who are closest to the challenge are the ones closest to the solutions. They're just hardly ever at the table. And so if you have violence interruption groups, uh, groups uh, like We Are Us, which are on the ground and actually making sure that we're addressing the fact that much of the violence that we're seeing in Baltimore and around the state is retaliatory violence. Right. You get me. Now, my person is going to get three of your people. You have groups on the ground that are actually combating that work, but they oftentimes are either underfunded or completely unfunded. These are things that the state can take unique leadership roles on to be able to address the violence, because if we because the number one priority of any chief executive is making sure your people are safe. It is something I take very, very seriously and it's something that our administration is going to lean in on.